fear of staying in this corporate game long term was already bigger than the fear of risking something on my own. You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We are locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. If you're listening or watching this on the web and you want to download some audio episodes, by all means, go to the podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Diego Faria, a business mentor for coaches and mentors with a unique and very interesting, I must say, anti-marketing approach. So, Tiago, how is it going today? Very good, my friend. I love your name because James... In English, is actually the translation of my name, Tiago, St. James, Santiago. Is it really? So we are related, yes. I saw it somewhere on the, on the webs. I'm not, don't yeah. take me for a <laughs> scientific research, but uh, I think it is, yeah. Worldwide, all good. So okay. let's start with the, the anti-marketing approach. That is uh, I don't, a bold statement, I guess, as far as that goes. So let's <laughs> jump down that rabbit hole right away. Yeah, so it's not anti-marketing per se. Of course, I'm, I'm a lover of marketing. It's mostly anti, uh, anti like what what we're bombarded daily by the gurus, internet marketing gurus, telling us you know that uh, there's an easy button to that you press and you you're one funnel away from magic and uh, you just need to use this uh, funnel tactics and this landing page and this ads um, and and usually that's uh, a recipe for for disaster, especially if, if you're in the beginning stages of your of your business, in my opinion, um, because uh, you get you get kind of it's, it's a trap. You get trapped in those kind of, you try to find the fastest, more complex way to do, to, to start getting clients, for example. But then you try it for a while. It doesn't work immediately. So, and then you quit very easily. And then you, oh, there's something even shinier on this side. So, and this is a game that I was, I was personally stuck on for two to three years. Um, and uh, yeah, it's something that is not advisable because uh, one, it's overly complex for someone who's starting right now. And two, uh, you you kind of um, you are complicating your life too much, uh, and you just keep jumping from strategy to strategy. You never let yourself uh, grow to its to its fullest potential of any or one of those strategies. So it's 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 um, it's anti more that kind of marketing uh, flashiness uh, approach. Um, and, and why do I uh, go against it? Because I suffered for it for two three years. I worked at Google for eight years, and then once once I quit that uh, job, I came back to Portugal try to start my own business with those complex strategies and uh, hit against a brick wall. It was not working. I was making my life very tough. My life and my client's life very tough. Um, so since then, I've been trying to simplify my approach as much as possible. Okay, this is overly complex. Maybe we don't need this. Uh, the first step I took was to work finally with a mentor. Uh, after three years trying to break the stone on my own, <laughs> trying to do everything on our own, we, we, always, we always have this thought that we oh, we can do everything. We're, we're superheroes, right? We, and we can do everything on our own, but no, it's a big mistake. So I worked with a mentor, created my plan, focused on a specific person I wanted to help, specific problem I wanted to help, and simplified my strategy, inspired by the book of this gentleman, getting everything you can out of all you've got. From oh, Abraham. nice. And I focused on this last sentence, all you've got. <laughs> and I was thinking, okay, what do I have You know, in my world? I have a contact list of... I have a network of people that I know, that I interact with. I have relationships, right? And I have an uh, audience. Most of us already have some sort of audience on LinkedIn or Facebook, whatever. And I was thinking of ways, okay, how can I leverage my current assets to start a cool business that can, you know, grow sustainably until the 10K level? Uh, so that after that, we can start playing with more complex strategies. But until then, I, I believe it's not necessary. Um, I believe we have everything we need in our world right now to capture even high high ticket paying uh, dream clients. Um, but of course, we need to tweak the way we position ourselves, the way we create an offer, and the way then we you know offer it to to the people around us. Uh, but that's the baseline of uh, of the strategy is uh, we already have everything we need. We just need to tweak some things. All right, you went through a lot of stuff there. Let's start with the Google one. You had the job with Google for a while. Eight years seems, Eight years, I'm yeah. guessing, I don't know for sure, because I don't have anything to support either way, but I'm guessing that that's a long time at a place like Google. Yes, yes, it's uh, ages. Like, uh, ages. 2011, <laughs> ages. 2011 right. 11 sounds like a Jurassic uh, period of, of time. <laughs> I, I look back to the photos I took then, and the, the phones were horrible, and the, 
I didn't have half of the things that we owe today. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was a long time. Um, I, for five, for five years, I was enjoying it, the game. <laughs> uh, but after five years, I started feeling oh, something is wrong here. It's I'm, I'm, I'm a bit misplaced. At first I thought, okay, maybe I'm in the wrong role or maybe I'm in the wrong office. Everyone is moving offices in Google, going to New York, going to Chicago, going to Malaysia. So maybe that was an issue, but, uh, I wasn't able to to even change roles because I was not super motivated. I would go to those interviews and like, yeah, I'm good at this. And then it's, I wanted to do that. But, uh -huh. uh, you know, I wasn't bringing my true self to those interviews. So I wasn't able even to move inside. So um, I slowly started realizing maybe the problem is, is me. I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong area, you know, I'm, <laughs> and um, slowly started understanding I'm, I'm psychologically unemployable. I, I I was super annoyed about having a manager nagging my nerves every week. So how was your OKRs? How are you? Uh, I was got, got tired of of also not being not using my full creativity. I was uh, you know limited to Google Ads, you know, to work with these big shark companies uh, that are, are my, my, mostly my creativity was quite limited. Uh, I didn't like working for others. I didn't. I don't like the the way the way that I was just feeding the big corporations. And I felt the need, okay, I need to do something on my own. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I slowly started thinking of ways to to start doing it. Uh, I started, like most of us did, like creating some crappy dropshipping businesses here and there, or uh, just to put the foot in the, in the water. Um, and then I decided, okay, I need to, to get out of here because the fear of staying in this corporate game long-term was already bigger than the fear of risking something on my own. When that happened, I talked to my wife, okay, we need to get out of here go back to Portugal. Um, I started preparing, you know, the the path. Uh, I invested here in some real estate. Uh, I also made sure that I already have a couple of clients uh, to work with when I, once I came here. So, and then I jumped in 2019. Um, nice. But yeah, of course, working at Google was super fun, of course, uh, for long periods. Uh, work hard, play hard. Uh, of course, I knew, uh, got to know amazing people that worked there. Um, some of the biggest companies in the world I interacted with in, in, in Europe and Middle East. Uh, yeah, learned a bunch. It's a, working at Google is like the pinnacle of if you like to play the game, the corporate game, and you like the tech tech world and the online digital space, it's it's like amazing. Uh, but you it, it just, I realized it just wasn't for me. Fair, totally fair. I love that phrase you used, psychologically unemployable. Because <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, myself included, listening to this podcast could say like, that's what I am. <laughs> That's what I am. I actually, so it's interesting. You had this, initially, so. I mean, you got this corporate job working for a big mega corporation, probably making some decent money, having an okay time. But there came a time when you realized, uh, I don't want to live my life this way. I don't want to be on my deathbed saying, I wish I did this, that, or the other thing. And eventually, the fear of mm -hmm. what could have been overcame. So that's awesome. That's very cool. So how did you yeah. decide not to get into some drop shipping business and do what you're doing now? Yeah, I actually didn't didn't start doing immediately what I'm doing now. I started uh, consulting smaller businesses in uh, like using what I I knew before, like the Google My Business uh, for local businesses, uh, some Google Ads. Um, but slowly, I, I started also immediately doing Facebook ads because I I, I missed. The, the the huge growth that Facebook ads were having while working at Google. I was like, ah, oh, missing out on all of this fun stuff. <laughs> so I immediately started like, playing around with Google uh, Facebook ads as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I didn't like the idea of having multiple bosses. So instead of having one boss, now I had multiple bosses, <laughs> which was slow, you know, working as an agency for small local businesses. Um, uh, so I, I fast realized also that was not my path. So I, I quit a job, get to get another job. No, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Um, and so I thought, okay, who can I help the best? Who, 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 who am I willing to work with that uh, will, I will enjoy and I could cause a real good transformation? And it will be something like who, someone like myself. I was helping others achieve results, so that's exactly who I should be focused on: helping um, people in this kind of help industry, uh, which are coaches, consultants, uh, service providers that focus on generating um, like amazing transformations that are that you can uh, charge high ticket for. So basically that's my area of expertise where I decided to focus more on. And that's, that's where I felt more comfortable and where I could generate the biggest results. And that's exactly how I, okay, this is my 
my uh, my beach, like we say in Portugal. This is my beach. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So when you first left and you start your own thing, you have all these bosses. By bosses, you're talking about the clients, and yes. they're just smaller clients. And a lot of times, the smaller clients are the naggiest <laughs> kind of clients. Most are... demanding, naggiest. Yes, yes. Yeah, or they they don't even know what to ask for, or they didn't even you know. You see what the value of your work most of the, many of the times. <laughs> sure, they don't know what success necessarily looks like. I imagine. I'm guilty of this as well when I've paid marketers to help me out. In the end, I just want the investment in marketing to turn into cash yeah, by yeah. way of adding more clients. And I yeah. feel like a lot of times with marketers versus business owners of whatever business, there's uh, somewhat of a disconnect of an expectation versus reality. And maybe neither one necessarily knows. There's, I guess... My point there is there's no hard and fast, like, hey, if you invest, whatever, hundred bucks, thousand bucks, whatever it is, you will get why. Uh, because then if that why was bigger, everyone would be like, Yes, I'll make that trade all day long, multiple times if I can. So yes. you were kind of getting annoyed by that, I imagine. You're like, Yeah, this isn't any good. So yeah. how did you pivot to the point of targeting the high ticket coaches and stuff like that? Because I, I felt that in order to make a big difference in any company, I would need to be involved not only in the marketing per se, but also in the creation of what, what they have to offer, right? And uh, Oh, uh, so I could become yeah expand Kind of, not advanced, but um, because you're, basically, if, you, if you're running ads to something, you're, and that offer that that person has or the company has is nothing you know, that is proven to work or it's not really well created. You're just pouring a pile of a gas in a pile of sticks, right? And uh, if there's no combustion, <laughs> there's not going to be any, any any fire or any explosion or whatever. Uh, so I, I was I was feeling like that. I was uh, bringing clients or bringing eyes, eyeballs into uh, companies, but then the service was not amazing or the, what they had to offer was just exactly the same as multiple other companies around that did the same. Uh, so I felt, okay, I, I need to be more involved in both the offer, of what, uh, the offer creation and then putting all the marketing efforts on top, because then I can control it at that aspect. And it's, it's more likely that will, will generate results. Um, and I was not an expert in any of those areas, but I was, I was helping dentists, you know, I was helping, uh, lawyers, you know, local businesses. So I figured, okay, I'll help someone that I understand, like myself. I'm a consultant. I'm a, I'm a coach. I'm a business mentor. So yeah, and then in that case, I can more easily impact on what they have to offer because I, I it's easier to create an offer, you know, out of your own knowledge or of your expertise, and you can create it for like very quickly out of out of nothing versus forcing a dentist to create a completely new service or whatever. Um, so, so yeah, the, in that sense, it helped me out. Uh, it made it makes my life easier to help to to bring results, and it's also very good for for my clients because I help them. Okay, let's use whatever you have, your knowledge, your expertise, and uh, etc. To and your clients to create something that people actually would want to buy desperately, you know. <laughs> and then the marketing is easy. After that, after you have something that people want badly, the offer if the offer sells by by itself, any marketing and sales will work, even if you're not terribly good at marketing or, or sales. Um, but if you have something that people really want then everything is much easier. All right. So has it hasn't been tough to find coaches and mentors that were willing to listen, <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better phrase. <laughs> uh, no, actually, no, no. It, uh, it's, um, people now, what I think they're understanding even more and more the need for that uh, because many, many coaches now came, at least here in Portugal, it became very fashionable to be a, be a coach. Um, and they all like took the same certifications, same, same kind of, um, yeah, certifications that that they thought would be enough to you know, start a whole business and grow crazy like that. But uh, most of them come to the market and they see that uh, it's very hard to differentiate nowadays because if you just come to the market saying, I'm a coach, uh, I'm a, I know I'm, um, how do you say, a life coach, very generic expression. Yeah, right. And then nowadays, nowadays it's like, uh, just okay, cool, good for you, you're a life coach. It just comes <laughs> to one, one year, goes out of the other, and it basically is just a bit of noise on the internet. Uh, so they feel the need um, to okay, how can I differentiate myself? Differentiate myself, um, and that's how you know. Usually they look for help, um, and uh, usually either they find me and, and then or someone else will help them out. But but it's it's um, 
it, it's a need nowadays with with the markets getting more and more competitive, especially mm -hmm. in the US, you know, North America, my God. But in Portugal, even also the same, which I've, it's the market I've been focused on mostly. Um, but, but yeah, I think that's the, that's the main issue. All right. Yeah, it's the word coach has been thrown around a lot and it's only ramped up because I guess the barrier to entry is you have to have internet and a computer of some kind, <laughs> maybe even your phone, right? And it's interesting. I've run into business coaches and all that jazz, life coaches, health coaches, insert descriptor here, and then coach. It's very <laughs> interesting. Some are good, doing very well, and others, well, some are not that good and still doing very well. Um, but it's interesting <laughs> how that term is just thrown onto anything. So when you say that people came to you, were you doing any paid marketing at all to attract them? Or was it more something else? I don't know, magic in the sky, something like that. Uh, no, I did some some paid uh, experiments while I was in that uh, shiny object chasing. <laughs> um, but but I, the majority of, of the people that found me were from my efforts I've done uh, at the beginning stages of my career here. I created a podcast. I actually started like you, what you're doing. I created a podcast uh, in order to gain some authority quick, quickly in my market. Um, and those episodes still today bring me uh, new leads. Uh, nice. But also, I also position myself as an expert on on, on YouTube and created my um, my own kind of uh, monologue channel and uh, monologue uh, podcast. Um, I, I always felt that I was not a content creator. <laughs> But uh, I defeated that stupid belief by just brute force. <laughs> I, I did I did a 90-day challenge, 90 videos, 90 consecutive days on YouTube, which I extended later for 120, just, just because, yes. <laughs> which helped me yeah, beat the belief, position myself as a, a partner of YouTube, um, and uh, you know, create a huge library of uh, videos that cover many, many topics and uh, that are still searchable nowadays. And, um, I think it was mo mostly the, the, the creation of my content plus my podcast that has, has been bringing me more more people, at least here in the local market. So. And, That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So you said 90 days, 90 videos, so a video a day, yeah. and they're 90 seconds long or initially they were? Or tell me how long they were. No, no, no. This was normal YouTube videos. I would 10 minutes, 15, some, sometimes 20. Uh, I was doing, oh, and you're doing uh, one a day. Yes, for the for the ninety days, yeah. Holy cow, that's um, that's impressive to say the least, just from an editing standpoint. No, 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 no. Of course, I would not. I would kill myself. I would if I was playing also the game of editing. I was just you know press a chord. I have my three topics. I put the paper next to me to so not not to forget, <laughs> and I would just uh, you know, just uh, jam in the camera to the camera, and then just upload whatever it was. I wouldn't think about it. Otherwise, I would go into the uh, okay the perfectionism game right and uh, i would never publish anything i just keep going keep going without looking backwards improving my skills like crazy right i was getting mm -hmm. better and better of course the first videos were horrible but then uh, at some point because you're doing it every day and forcing yourself to uh, improve and um, gain experience by the 30th video i was I, I i found my voice i was like oh my god now I know exactly who I'm talking to, the, the person, uh, his frustrations, what he needs to do, et cetera. Uh, and it, it was felt through the camera. And many people said uh, around that video that uh, nah, you're now, now you're like, uh, you're, you're being yourself. I, was, I, was, I started becoming genuine. And, um, and then pe that started to attract opportunities to my world. You know? Because before I was trying to force a bit myself, I was trying to be someone I was not exactly. I didn't know who I was uh, as a content creator. So I was just putting things out there. But at some point, I found my voice, and um, yeah, it was it was it's perfect because you surpass your all your traumas and your all your fears of not being a content creator. You gain a skill very quickly because you're doing it every day, no matter what, no matter if you're on holidays or if you're sick or there's no excuse, uh, and you're accountable for because you announced it, you know, on your first video and you told your friends, your your family, whatever. <laughs> Um, and you position yourself as a content creator and YouTube likes it. You're like, hey, this guy's answering all the questions people have in this specific topic. I'm going to put a bit more eyes, eyeballs on him. Um, and then, yeah, after 90 days, you like, you look back, oh my God, I have this library of 90 amazing videos I can use and leverage for my clients, for my leads, etc. And I will keep on bringing traffic because it's, it's a search engine, YouTube, right? People keep searching for those topics if you make 
if you make them wisely, right? You have to think a bit about uh, search intent and SEO, you know, uh, put mm -hmm. all the cool keywords in the, um, but the simple act of being there present uh, daily, it really is a cool idea for, for whoever is like, I need to create content thinking I need to create content, but I, I just don't know how I'm not good at it. Just do a 90 day challenge. <laughs> Just do it. That is awesome. That's 90 days seems like a long time to do anything that you're not used to doing just yes. in a row, regardless of what happens, how you're feeling, what's going on in the day, holiday, whatever. That is yeah. impressive. So you, with your experience at Google, did you know some of the, the tricks, I guess, to, to get found on YouTube? Cause YouTube, I don't know what the number is for a number of videos that get uploaded every single day, yeah, but it's yeah. gotta be in the neighborhood of millions, if not billions. Yeah. Yes, per second. Well, <laughs> to be able to raise your hand through the noise and say, look at me, right? Did you yes. have some idea or some skills in that regard? No, because we didn't touch organic while working there. It's, it's all paid. Okay. It's all the paid version. So I learned it like through watching videos, actually through Miles Beckler. He was my inspiration at the time. He was uh, he was the, the crazy content creator. It inspired me to start it. Um, but yeah, it's like, I, I knew that in order to get eyeballs in a new platform i mean you have, you have to be consistent you have to bring a lot of value not only just random crap right but <laughs> actually I, I was analyzing keywords seeing what people actually was, people were searching for both on google and youtube and then okay i'll just today i'm going to create a video around this specific keyword frame and uh doing this uh youtube looks at you a bit like more as a content creator like i said and he looks at you as someone who's answering all the questions people have so okay let's put some eyeballs on him um yeah but it's uh it's not an easy game to play youtube <laughs> no uh, no 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 i've had a much easier uh i don't want to say easier <laughs> i've had much more success with the audio side of the podcast i guess on yes, our end with yes. authentic business adventures than we have on youtube and i don't That's just true. because the scale i'm not scale just because i guess it's designed more for audio than for video mm -hmm. perhaps but i figured youtube is such a big player in the internet regardless of what you're looking for that we have to be on there so it's interesting how some videos are going crazy cool yes. and others you're like oh six views that's great <laughs> yeah youtube is more for people like looking for quick uh how do you say quick quick, quick video consumption or like uh are looking for something some quick answer right versus podcast listeners are people that yeah they want to sit sit down listen attentively you know they're yeah and they, yeah you know, and they're usually podcasters are usually podcast listeners i've seen studies that are that have higher buying purchase as well so it's really a great audience oh interesting well we yeah. like to think we're smarter right <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway so business is going well it sounds like is that fair to say well, it's not exactly what I want already, but... Uh, well, you yeah, always want growth, that's right? Stage. I mean, no one's ever going to be like, yep, I'm cool right here. I don't, that's probably not yeah. even realistic if you do believe that. I think no but I guess does. you're right. <laughs> you're happy you made the change. Is that safe to say from yes, yes, yes. leaving the corporate gig? For sure, for sure. It's like uh, All right. a completely different, uh, um, you know, I don't know, different vibe, different... Uh, um, even when things don't go well, I mean, I never feel as stressed out as when I was at Google for like having meetings with my boss or some stupid <laughs> presentation I didn't want to deliver. It's a different kind of stress, you know, you feel mm -hmm. like you're more in control. Um, and this, this accountability, I don't know, it brings you more peace because you can control everything, but it's, you know, <laughs> for the good and for the yeah. bad, but uh, fair. it feels totally better. Fair. So tell me a story about you. When you were at Google, were you married when you were at Google? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was um, married in 2016. So it was okay. three, it was three or four years there, you know, before coming. So here. you pull your wife aside and you're like, hey, honey, funny story. I'm going to leave my corporate gig and go off on my own. Be the entrepreneur that I've always wanted to be. How did she react? Yeah, thank God she was completely understandable and, and adventurous in that sense. And she she saw or she was already seeing that I was miserable, you know, already becoming miserable there. Uh, although she would love to keep saying to her friends and family that, oh my 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 husband works at Google. She she went <laughs> defeated that thought and uh, and she knew she knew that I really wanted this to to start something on my own. 
Uh, and she also wanted to, to, to come to Portugal. Portugal is an amazing country. It's much more sunny than uh, Dublin, Ireland. Dublin Ireland is always rainy, very gray. <laughs> In the winters, you go to work uh, at night, you come back at night. It's like, oh. So, so she didn't see it with bad eyes. Um, see, she, nah, she just said, let's go, let's do it. Uh, whatever you, what do you feel like is right. But of course, we prepare, we prepare our land, right? We uh, invested here in some real estate before we made the jump. And uh, yeah, and then I prepared, I made sure I had a couple of clients aligned so that we didn't start from scratch, from nothing. Um, but yeah, she was super supportive. And uh, but I think if she wasn't, maybe I would not be able to do the jump or I don't know, I, I would lose my my faith of like, yeah, I'm just ready. It's time to go. I don't know. I think it was, it was super important for her, her help. Sure. That's fair. That's totally fair. So when you, when a high end coach or high ticket coach comes to you, what is the first thing that you look at in regards to what they have? Is it their offer? Is it how they are as a coach? Is it the marketing they've been doing and whether it's worked or not? What are you looking at when you dig under, under the covers, so to speak? Yeah, I think you're right. The first thing you said is, is exactly the offer that I, that I look at. Because that, that's exactly the way you position yourself is, is the main issue for most cases. Uh, like what you talk, we talked about at the beginning, that the niche, the, the being a very generic, I'm just a life coach. <laughs> Usually that's the main mistake. Uh, because we have this te natural tendency of coming to a market and we want to help everybody. Everyone who gives us money is welcome. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but that's, uh, that's an, uh, it's a trap. It's a trap. And um it's sometimes at the beginning, it's hard for people to to grasp it, that idea. But I usually use this uh, metaphor, which is like, I have a river right here in front of me. It's like Tagus River. Um, and most of us, we want to capture all the fish in this river. So we use a huge fish net. We pop, pop it to the water, but that fish net has huge holes between them. And all the fish, most of the fish go through it. And you end up just kept catching a couple of them almost accidentally, right? Uh, that's, that's just what it is to be a generic coach versus trying to capture a... Uh, I don't know how to say in English, a group of fish of uh, the similar fish. School, fishes. yeah. School, exactly. Versus trying to create, grab a school and you have a smaller fish net with uh, smaller holes and you are able to capture all of them, right? So that's that's the difference of of you position yourself as a, a specialist. You know, I, I am, I'm not a life coach. Or no, I'm not a relationship coach. I'm, for example, I, I help men that are on the verge of divorce to save their marriages, for example. That's something more tangible, more specific and uh, it resonates more with that group of people, right? When someone here, when a man that is in a situation hears that, he's like, oh my God, this is for me, right? Uh, I need, Tiago needs this to help me. I'm like, this is, I have a this desperate problem right now that I need to fix uh, exactly now. And he seems to be the only guy that understands me deeply. So it, it immediately trans transforms into the only viable solution for my problem, right? So that's the first thing is the, the niche, right? To, to be very specific. Uh, and then also in terms of the offer, the other thing that all of us, including me, uh, do this mistake, mm -hmm. sorry, is to uh, uh, is not to be specific also on the on the problem and try to solve. Try when we try, um, we don't focus on solving a now problem. So something that is urgent for the buyer to solve right now. If we solve some some problem that is a ah, okay, one day I'll I'll figure think about that. They will never buy, right? We'll just keep pro procrastinating and say, oh, one day I'll invest in that. Um, so we need to think of, uh, all the problems we solved in before with our clients all, or even interview people like I do in my anti-marketing method is what I, what I say is that you should first choose your niche and then talk to five to 10 potential clients in that area that you uh, feel that are, are related to your niche and just ask some questions like, what are your main frustrations? What are your main obstacles? What have you been struggling with? How does it feel like, uh, what are your main objectives? And then figure out if there's any pattern and realize what is the urgent problem that you want to solve right now. And that will be your first offer. Your 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 first high ticket offer should be around an urgent now problem that they want badly to solve at this exact moment, not sometime in the future. It has to be something that they want to solve now. Okay. Can you give an example of a less than great offer that a client came to you and they were having and you tweaked it. I mean, sometimes it doesn't take that much of a tweak and turn it into an actual offer that was producing for them. Uh, yeah, for example, the um, my I have a, a career coach. Uh, she's called Lourdes. And she was, uh, excuse me, I have some coffee today. Um, she was positioned herself like a generic yeah, career coach. 
And then what we did the exercise with her exactly this. So ask her questions about, okay, think about all the people you've worked in the past uh, and make, give, give me a list of all the symptoms that it, they brought to you. Now, what were the original problems? What did you actually want to solve in that precise moment? And then uh, simply make it, made her think, what was the problem that gave you the most pleasure to solve and that you were able to generate a bigger transformation, like more, the, you know, the incredible transformation for the person. Uh, and then why don't we just focus on that? For this specific offer that we're trying to work with her, um, and uh, and yeah, and she, she instead of being a career coach, she focused on okay, I focus on C levels that are willing to uh, make a, a complete career move, like to a different a different uh, area, not not even within the company, but to a completely different different um, area area of of, uh, of expertise, you know. Uh, so once she focused on that, okay, it was much easier to find those people to communicate to those people. Uh, and to 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 close the group like exactly like, I need five people that are willing to generate this uh, transformation and to get this transformation. Um, so that that was the case. So instead of being a generic career coach, no, I'm focusing on C levels that want to change completely their uh, career. No. Nice. And then digging deeper into the message itself, are you offering or are you suggesting that they offer something as basic as a free session or something like that, or what is the um, what is the call to action that you're using as a trigger? Um, I, I usually like to um, to recommend to my clients that they uh, they have free calls with their with their customers, like have a discovery calls, because in my opinion, that's the easiest way for you to close a client if you don't have amazing copywriting skills, right? You're not you're not a master copywriter. You cannot sell high ticket on a landing page if you don't have those skills or if you don't hire someone very expensive to do it for you right um and the second best way to do it is to you know to start talking to people it's much easier for you to interview someone and if you do it the right way which is using the consultative sales asking questions like uh trying to uncover the problems that the person has um make make that the person almost tell itself to you uh, through those questions uh how does it make you feel what have you tried before uh, what are your main goals um, and then simply at the end of, of the call, you simply ask the, the question of, do you want help with that? And then selling doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Just uncovering the problem, make the person tell her her life story and what she wants to accomplish, and then simply ask if she wants help. And, and, and usually it's easier for you to sell something that way because you contextualize what you're going to present to the person, and then she will see it as the logical next step to working with you because you've been spending time with her trying to understand what she's going through. Um, so yeah, I, I usually advise to be at a, through a, a sales call. Um, gotcha. But there are so different do... ways to bring the persons to that call, yeah. Okay. So do everything you can to get that potential client to call or set an appointment with the coach to see if there's so that the coach and the client can have a conversation, yeah. see if they're a good fit. And from there, the coach will discover the pain and then focus on the pain and then make sure that they can solve that pain. So then it's an easy layup at that point. So I like yes. it. What have been some of the marketing, or I guess at this point, it'd be advertising channels that have worked the best for your coaching clients? I actually don't use advertisement. Like do I'm, not. The anti oh, you do not. Okay. But the, the goal of the anti-marketing method is for you not to need that any of that because like I said at the beginning, like you already have everything you need in your world. You have a network of people, you have contact lists of previous clients, leads, etc., and you have your own follower list, right? Like your audience. Um, and the way I like to work with people in that sense is to start off with, okay, let's let's talk to your current and past clients, your leads, uh, maybe even your audience to interview them. Make a, um, like a, a you can post something on, on social media, like a, a, I want to create a program around this topic to generate this specific uh, transformation. Uh, and I would love to have your opinion. Like, would you be available for a 10, minute, 10 15 minute call? Uh, I'd just love to have a feedback uh, from your side. And that's a very easy yes that you get from most people that that are that you have kind of a relationship with, either a contact or, or following on social media. Um, and with that, you already get many wins. Once you interview those five, 10 people, they first of all tell you exactly what you have to create, right? They will tell you what their main problems, what everybody's suffering, frustrations. The, word, the emotional words will be weapons that you can use in your own offer. So you can go back to the drawing board. Okay, people want to solve this urgent problem. I'm going to create something around this. They want to achieve this specific goal. This is going to be my promise. 
So you create your offer around that. And then you can go back to all those people you just interviewed and you say, hey, I just created this that solves actually the problem that you told me you had. What do you think about it? What's your opinion? Uh, and well, just with that, you already can have some three to five clients out of nothing because they already know you. They told you their life story. You created something around the problem they have and most likely they will be interested in it. Um, and uh, and if they're not, you you also have you have an if they don't need exactly what you offered, you can, you still have an opportunity there. All right, you you can still ask those people. Okay, but do you know anyone else that would be interested in this offer or that we could benefit of this offer? Because I have this referral program where I give you a fee for every client that you bring to, on my side. So leveraging referrals, right? Proactively mm -hmm. doing that and systematically doing that to all your contacts around you both for the people that need your offer right now that could become clients and for those that don't need your offer because they're not your target audience or whatever, but you can still leverage everything you have around you to create your sales team. Uh, and that will be incentivized to send you uh, very good leads and warm leads because you, as you know, recommended and referred leads are easy to oh, yeah. easier to sell. They're, they're super Much motivated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. uh, so th that's basically the um, anti-marketing method is leveraging what you have to give your new offer to whoever needs it or just whoever doesn't need it, you can ask them for uh, referrals. All right. So using what you have is the main idea that you'll initially send an email or something like that to your, to your contact list or your LinkedIn contacts or something like that. Or yeah, tell me about the initial communication with this, with your, the contacts that you have. Yeah, so on social media, you can create a post just saying what I said uh, at the beginning. I'm creating a software on this uh, and I would love to have your opinion. Would you have 10 to 15 minutes for a quick Zoom call? And I recommend you, you record it because then you can, uh, uh, you know, take those emotional words word by word that people say and, and not just your interpretation. Uh, so oh, that's sure. on social media. But then you can also reach out to your previous clients, leads personally or send a message saying exactly the same thing. Hey, I want to create an offer around this topic. Uh, would you be available for a 10, 15 minute call? I would love to have your opinion. People love to give opinions, right? To give their feedback on something. <laughs> right? Right? So it's an easy yes, usually. You can easily get 10 people to to have an interview with, mm -hmm. which can be very productive. Uh, and then and then, then the interview, just ask, what are your main frustrations, your problems? How does it make you feel? You try to really touch the wound and make people give your mo the most emotional answers and not just uh, not just say yes or no right <laughs> you really try to dig in deep deeper like uh, how does it make you feel uh, but how does it look like during the day and once you collect all that information it's it's amazing you 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 either notice a pattern in in terms of the, the main problems and objectives or you identify something that okay this this is exactly what I want to work with I want to work with these specific people uh, and then you can use those words in your own in your own offer description like uh, the main urgent problem this is the transformation these are the main things that i tried to do before it didn't work the, the objections right so you, just by interviewing people you already get so much so much uh, out of it and uh, most of us avoid it stupidly i don't know why we have the tendency to be on our own minds creating everything from from scratch and then uh, okay people want this for sure i'm gonna put it in the market and nobody buys it right? <laughs> for sure right <laughs> If you build it, they will come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know it sounds like a, a bit of boring work to talk to people and you want to hide it behind your computer, but it, it really does magic. It opens up so many doors, you know, that it's... Yeah, uh, I wouldn't... To... I guess I personally wouldn't consider it boring work because I love chatting with people, but that's yes. why I have a podcast, I guess. Yes. But it's it's interesting that you're talking about the, the pain. What I learned in sales training that I've gone through is that you find the pain and you essentially, they call it twisting the knife or if someone comes to you with a knife in their back and they're kind of, eh, hey, I want to get this knife out of my back. Eventually that you, you kind of wrench on the knife a little bit and you twist it a little bit and you say, this knife, is this the one you want to get out to the point where they feel like they must get it out. And you're the one that's, that's right there to help them because you've gone through all the stuff and prove that you're the person to help them with the knife and all that kind of stuff, getting it out. All that jazz. So it's very interesting. Uh, tell me, tell me some of your success stories that you've had so far. Um, yeah, so I, I had more local uh, success stories. Sure, uh, I'm local my is good. Internationalization process right now, but uh, uh, but yeah, one of the cases was the client that I discussed before, Lourdes. Um, so yeah, I helped her create that specific pro program. Um, 
and she actually leveraged her own lists and uh, contacts in her own LinkedIn profile, et cetera. Um, and she just created one of those posts that I actually recommend people to do with a hand raising posts, which are like, it's like you giving a, uh, a dish full of cookies, cookies and asking, oh, do you want one? <laughs> it's, it's a very easy, uh, it's, it's a way to position an offer that is not selling directly. It's just simply asking, do you want something? Do you want this? Uh, and this kind of post is like, I'm looking for five people that are, you know, inter that would like to obtain a specific goal. So if you are this specific niche person and you're interested, just send me a email, uh, send me a message or comment below the word interested, you know, uh, and those specific posts uh, that are, that's how you can extract from your current social media, those people that are ready to buy now and that are interested in, of course, in your new offer, you have to create something that they really want to buy now, right? If you don't do that, mm -hmm. it's not, not going to work. Um, but with those posts, it's, it's faster for you to identify those that are ready. And then it's an excuse for you to interact with them. You can, after that, you can send them a message, right? Uh, like a direct or a messenger or whatever. Uh, and you 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 start the process of selling it, right? You can ask a couple of questions on on Messenger or d through a message uh, to see if the person actually has a problem you could help solve, if they're motivated to do it. And if so, you just bring them to a call, right? Like we said before. Uh, and then you know it's 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 easier to sell to that person that showed already interest that I want I want in. Um, yeah, and so, so she did that, and she. In a space of a week and a half, she was able to close the five slots that she wanted to sell. Wow. Uh, each of them for 500 euros, which is a great, a great amount of money here in Portugal. Yeah. Uh, and she was super happy, especially because she created a program that she didn't have before as a group program instead of one on one. Uh, so she was able to, okay, I'm just going to create the videos and go on holidays. And when I'm back, I will kick, kick that program and I'll just be present one hour per week helping those five people and, you know, transporting them week by week until the main transformation. And uh, she felt amazing with with it. Uh, only using what she had, you know, to create the offer and to sell it directly to those, to the people that she- That's awesome. In world. Yeah, that's really impressive. Really impressive. What are some of the things, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see coaches making in regards to their marketing or their messaging? <laughs> yeah, so um, I think we, we covered a couple of them. So, the, the, the major one that I still see a lot is the the being generic, right? <laughs> generic service <laughs> the provider. Big generic, coach. I love it. <laughs> being generic. Being yeah. generic. Trying to please everyone and pleasing no one specifically, right? Um, that's a big one. And then the other one is also, yeah, trying to put everything you know into your new program or into your service. Like, uh, what do you call those? Um, not a library, but uh, encyclopedia kind of. Uh, oh, voice. sure. <laughs> putting yeah. everything here but but that kind of overwhelms the person on your side maybe she doesn't need everything it will just confuse her uh so we should focus on okay for this specific urgent problem that you want to solve now quick fast you know easy what are the the few things that i can use from my arsenal that will take her to where she wants to go the faster the easier the less stressful way so that forces you to okay not put everything you know in, in, into one thing um, but just put the things that actually move the needle faster, the 80-20, the right? Um, because the lighter the, your program is, the shorter the, the time for the person to get the result, the quicker you get her, give her quick wins, right? Uh, the easier it will be for you to sell. So you position the program like that uh, and you can generate transformations quicker, faster, uh, more reliably uh, because we're in the results business, right? And if we don't generate results, we're here just, you know, playing playing around. No one wins out of it. We're just losing time, right? Um, right. You, need, you need testimonials and case studies, etc. So, um, yeah, that's another big mistake is try to to jam everything into your your one program. Um, yeah, I think those are the main the two main niches that I see that I love to work with. It's like fair, my, totally fair. My, my beach. That is so true. We're definitely in the results business. So if the results aren't if we're not providing that, that was one of the challenges that I had when I was coaching some of the clients that I would coach, you'd give them the steps to take and then you'd meet the next week or month or two weeks, whatever it was, depending upon their schedule. And you'd be like, Hey, did you do your stuff? And they'd be like, ah, ah. I got busy, man. I don't know, kids, soccer, locusts, whatever. <laughs> just excuse, excuse, excuse. So you're like, all right, let's just focus on today and just go moving forward. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. Here's your steps. 
then you meet with them again and i was like hey did you do your stuff i mean like funny story man there's hurricanes floods earthquakes my mother-in-law all this stuff and then that happens a few times and you're like eh, i gotta cut you loose mm -hmm. i gotta cut you loose mm -hmm. i love your money happy big fan of green money right it's always good or whatever color it is in portugal <laughs> right <laughs> like the money but if you're not getting success from the work that i share with you because you're not taking the steps right like i can well, tell you how to do your push-ups but i can't do your push-ups for you yeah so you got to take those steps so there were a few clients where i'm just like we gotta let you go and most of the time it's cordial and all that kind of stuff but you're just like you gotta be you as a client have to be willing to to do the stuff that you're paying someone to tell you what to do so Absolutely. it's interesting i imagine most coaches run into something like that every once in a while yeah and you know, of course i did i still still have an accident here and there but uh, the way i solved it and i try to to tell my clients to do the same is to to be super selective in, in who you let in um because you're only going to be as good as your clients allow you to be right if right. you bring the wrong the wrong clients you're not going to get the results and you're not going to be good at your work right so you should focus on like, that's why the specificity is so so crucial okay who's the person what is their context what is their specific urgent problem they want to solve right now because for example if you're helping i'm helping uh new entrepreneurs uh to get to get leads online and uh you, you know you're gonna be in trouble because first of all they don't have money to invest in you second <laughs> of all they're super distracted they're gonna fall into all, all the distractions and they're never gonna focus on doing something so you, by default you're putting yourself in a prob problematic position right so maybe focusing on more specific clients that you know that have the ability to buy and to implement what you are offering right that, that is super key and and that you achieve that you achieve that by being super specific on who you exactly you serve and only accepting those people no one else uh, uh, that will protect you from uh, you know those kind of situations and and your clients will be super happy because they they're in the right context to succeed. They're in the right mindset. They have the right resources, mental bandwidth, or whatever. Um, so yeah, that that's the key for you to stop having those kind of experiences you just described. Nice, I love it. Tiago, where can people find you? Yes. So uh, uh, as I said, I'm in the beginning stages of internationalizing my brands, but uh, you can still lurk me at tiagofaria.pt, T-I-A-G-O-F-A-R-I-A.pt. And you can, if, if you use Google Chrome, just Google Translate, you can see what I've been doing before. All right. Um, and you can shoot me an email if you have any question or any comment about this strategy at tiago at tiagofaria.pt. Or if you want to have a chat with me, a quick call, a diagnostics call to see if you already have clients in your world, just on the top right corner of my website, just book a call and uh, we can have fun. Very cool. I have to apologize. What is the .pt? Is that for Portugal? Yes. Portugal. It is. PT. Okay. Where does, where does T come in Portugal? Portugal. Portugal. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, look at me not knowing how to spell. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, because oh my true. goodness gracious that yeah. is yeah i guess in in north america here i'm used to canadian one and whatever interesting yeah, that's true so i appreciate you being on the show tiago thank you so much sir it was a real pleasure yeah um, if there's just took some info out of here yeah if there's one takeaway that you had to give for the coaches that are listening to this thinking i'm on the fence i'm not really sure i just need a little bit of thing just to dip my toes in what is the suggestion that you would have for them to do right now today at this moment uh, i think it would be to make that post that we talked about the uh i want to create an offer around this topic would you be willing to have a quick chat with me 10 to 15 minutes and i was wanting to know your opinion you have your feedback on my on my program that i'm creating and with that you, are, you can start talking to people and uh, things start happening you know when you start moving the needle uh, opportunities will arise and uh, I think that will be the, a great first step and you will get, already get a quick, uh, potential quick wins out of it uh, if you create something around what they told you they want to do uh, you can already have uh, a good start much like that that's awesome I love it low hanging fruit and then work your way up the tree Tiago yes. thank you so much for being on the show thank you so much Jane it was a true pleasure See, talk to you this soon is, yeah 
This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We are locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. If you're listening to this on the web, if you could do us a huge favor, give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe, and of course, share it with your entrepreneurial friends, especially those coaches that need to get the, the word out there and get that the new clients coming in. Because that's always good, right? My name is James Kidman, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist services for service businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com. And of course, the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur and all of us, available wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Tiago Fardia, business mentor for coaches and mentors with a unique anti-marketing approach. Tiago, can you tell us your website one more time? Yes, it's T-I-A-G-O-F-R-I-A dot P-T, Tiago Faria. Awesome. I love it. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business. <laughs>